Hey there, it's Gigi. Back with another review. Again, Bad Religion, of course, but this time it's a live concert, not just the live streams. Actually got to go and see the band perform live. Oh man, I miss live music. I think the last time I went to an actual live concert event uh, was September of 2019. I had seen Agent Orange at Kung Fu Necktie, another one of my favorite bands, another great punk act. It was a great show. Uh, that was the last time I saw any live music before the end of the world happened. But we're back now, and I'm going to get right into it. It was fantastic. One of the best shows I've seen in a very long time. Now, I'm admittedly a fanboy. We all know that. But... What can I say? It was fantastic. I use that word a lot. You'll see that as we go on. So let's start with the opening act, War on Women. Wow. Sorry, that was a bad pun. Um, but no, really, I saw them and wow. They were fucking fantastic. Uh, lots of energy. I should have looked up their names before I started this review so I could be a little bit more well-informed, but I'm definitely going to be following them and we'll find out more about them because they were really just fantastic opening act. The set was short and sweet, 20 minutes, lots of high energy. The vocalist is a great singer. Uh, she also has a lot of power behind the voice. Um, I liked that they were melodic, but hard. Uh, a great punk rock act. A uh, great opener, too, because, the, like I said, the set was short and sweet, about 20 minutes. They left me wanting more, which I think is exactly what a good opening act should do. Not unlike Bad Religion, a lot of their songs have either a political uh, or social critique aspect to them. So if you're a fan of that, or if that's an aspect of, of punk bands that you like, then, you know, there are no exception. Definitely, I can't stress it enough, check out War on Women. All right, now on to my favorite band. Well, one of my favorite bands for several years, probably close to 15 years now, Alkaline Trio. Uh, I was really excited to see both of these bands, especially on the same bill, dream come true for me at this lineup. It originally was going to go to the show in Asbury Park when this tour was originally announced back in spring of 2020. And as we know that tour ended up being canceled because of you know the unmentionable i don't want to say it because it'll immediately not that i even have enough people to be monetized but if i ever do this will immediately get demonetized if i even mention the c word i guess i could say Come. not the word i was talking about you all know so i was really disappointed when the tour was canceled and they didn't immediately announce that it was going to be rescheduled. I thought it was, you know, the smart thing to do uh, to cancel the tour, actually, in retrospect, because then fans were able to get refunds. The tour was canceled before I was able to actually purchase tickets to the show in Asbury Park, because they didn't have a Philly date originally. So, I guess I lucked out there, but whatever. Alkaline Trio's set was very good. Maybe I'm spoiled... Uh, I think this was either the ninth or 10th time I've seen them. I've lost count. But the set list, I was kind of hoping for, I don't know, a few more rarities. And maybe I'm just stuck in that because of the last decades series uh, that Bad Religion did. Where there's a lot of songs they don't normally play or haven't normally played. But it was cool. Uh, one of the highlights uh, was Blue Carolina. That was one I, I really didn't expect to hear in the set, and I do love that song. As I've said before, Dan is their secret weapon, I feel like, for Alkaline Trio. He was on fucking fire on Sunday night. Um, he really, for me, saved their set, and I love Matt Skiba. I do. Um, even my lady knows uh, he's, you know, on the cheat list for both of us. So, um, I fucking love the dude. And I understand he had lost his voice. They even had to cancel one of the dates. I think it was the Dallas, Texas date. Uh, Alkaline Trio didn't play at all because Matt had lost his voice. And he appeared to have got it back for the most part fairly quick. And he sounded good. Don't get me wrong. He sounded good. I've heard him sound better, though, um, especially towards the end of their set. Uh, this Could Be Love was one of the last songs. And by then, you could tell his voice was just, it was starting to 
get worn down. But he sounded good, you know, not bad by any means. He was kind of talk singing a lot, I guess saving his voice. You know, I get it. They haven't been touring for the last two years. So not bad, but I've heard him do better. Dan, however, Dan Andriano, holy shit, that guy, what a performer. Uh, he sounds great. They all look great. Um, Derek Grant is a phenomenal drummer. Um, the only thing I'd say, Derek actually kind of looked bored almost during a couple parts of the set, a couple songs. Um, but he just makes it look effortless. Like it takes nothing from him at all. He's just playing there and hitting as hard as you fucking can and just made it look like nothing at all. Uh, just a fantastic drummer. I could watch him all day. I love the videos that he's put up from the past live performances, the drum cam videos. You should check those out. Uh, I actually did a cover of All on Black with a friend of mine that I met on Facebook, and we used his performance from that past live video that was put up. Uh, he had actually sent me the link to it. It was unlisted at the time. It's up now, but I thought that was really cool because me and, and another uh, person on YouTube had commented before he uploaded it how cool it would be to get the all on black video. So just really swell guy, I thought that was cool. You know, it's another one cool thing about 2021, you know, is we can communicate with these artists, you know, like we never could before. I'll get into that a little bit too. Oddly enough, I was able to talk a little bit to Jamie Miller, Bad Religions drummer, uh, on Instagram a couple weeks prior to the show. Hey, future Greg here. Um, I actually forgot to mention this when I was doing the filming originally for the bad religion portion i mentioned talking to jamie miller on instagram and he had put a post up uh related to i think the decades one of the time i'd have to look it up again i should do more research anyway i asked him if we were going to be seeing or hearing any of the uh, deep cuts and rarities on the tour that we heard in uh, the decades performances and uh he actually responded to me he uh added me on instagram and uh said yes emphatically. So I thought that was cool. I forgot to mention it when I did the review. So back to that. But to wrap up on the Alkaline Trio set, um, it was good. Uh, like I said, Matt was good. Dan was better. Uh, Derek is, like I said, he's just fantastic all the time. Uh, I think they opened with Private Eye. Um, I noticed that the Pittsburgh show two days after this one they got a set that was a little bit different, frankly a little bit better. The whole audio is available on YouTube uh, that somebody uploaded. Both bands' sets are available. I can put a link for that as well. Blue Carolina was cool, but other than that, I feel like we didn't get a lot of, I guess, deep cuts from Alkaline Trio. The way the Pittsburgh set got My Friend Peter. They played Goodbye Forever, which we didn't get in Philly. I'd have to look up the set list, but... You know, I guess I should have been a little more prepared. However, I didn't feel cheated or anything. Like I said, maybe I was spoiled from seeing them so many times before, but I guess I was just expecting a few more deep cuts. But thoroughly enjoyed their set. I loved seeing them. It was really great. I fucking love this band. So, you know, they're kind of like pizza. Even when it's not that good, it's still pretty good. So definitely loved Alkaline Trio. I would always recommend them. So I dug that. Now, on to the headliner, Bad Religion. What, like I said in the beginning, uh, what can I say that I haven't already said about this band? I fucking love this band. Um, they were fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, the last time I saw Bad Religion live was on the 30th anniversary tour. I went with a friend of mine. Um, I think they played at, I want to say the Electric Factory. It was, you know, over 10 years ago, so forgive me. But the last time I'd seen them was a very long time ago, the 30th anniversary. This is, you know, their 41st anniversary tour. And I guess you could say, um, wow. Yeah, they were really fucking good. They were phenomenal when I saw them for a decade ago. You know, but now that they're in their, most of them are in their late 50s, with the exception of probably Jamie, you would never know by the sound of them. Yeah, they play in E flat, but I feel like they've been doing that since the mid 90s. Grafen sounds fucking amazing. He's one of the best singers in punk rock, I think. Jay Bentley is always amusing uh, to watch and to listen to. He's he's just a, a fantastic bass player. He is very self-deprecating, but he is a really 
solid basis. There's some really pretty tasty licks in the Bad Religion bass lines that I think sometimes go unnoticed. Or maybe they don't. I think more attention should be brought to that. The set list was great. You know, some songs that we heard on the Decades performances. Uh, they opened with New Dark Ages. I have half, a little less than half the set up on the video. Like I said, I'll put the link to that in the description or up here, maybe over there. But yeah, New Dark Ages from New Maps of Hell was the opener. I can't remember exactly what was the second song, uh, but I know in the video it follows it was Fuck You off the True North album, which was great. Loved hearing that. We got some, some really cool songs. Man with a Mission, that was one that I really didn't expect. It's not one of my favorites, but it sounded really fucking good live. Another song that they whipped out from the Decades performances they've been playing all tour is Better Off Dead. I recently did a cover of that. I'll plug plug that somewhere in the description or somewhere on the screen. But yeah, hearing them play Better Off Dead live, for me, for the first time hearing it live in person, it was great. I fucking love that song, hence why I covered it with Luis uh, from Barcelona. Definitely check that out. Uh, the set was awesome. I, I can't gush about it enough. It was at the Met in Philadelphia, uh, you know, an old opera house, so the sound was really good. The sound was better for Bad Religion set than it was for Alkaline Trios. And I don't know if that's because, you know, Bad Religion has had the same front of house guy, Ronnie Kimball, for uh, I think since as long as they've had Brian Baker in the band. So he just knows how to dial it in, and the band is so dialed in, and that room sounded great. Just, it was fucking fantastic. I know I'm repeating myself, but if you have a chance to check out any of the remaining dates on this co-headlining Bad Religion Alkaline Trio North American tour, fucking go. Go and see them. It's a great show. I wanted to bring my kids, uh, but they're seven. My son has some sensory issues with loud noises, and since I had never been to the Met prior to this, I didn't want to take a chance. You know, I could have got him earplugs, I know all that stuff, but we'll work up to that. So but maybe next time. But So if you have kids under 10, maybe not bring them. The but crowd was great. It was one of the things I, I love about this band is uh, good bands tend to attract good fans. And I think, you know, all the Alkaline Trio fans that I've met have been some really fantastic people. And uh, same thing, even more so, with a lot of the people that I've met. Um, I'm friends with a couple folks that I've met from the Facebook groups. There's the Yahe group on Facebook as well as the uh, the Bad Religion page group, or the BR page, as it's listed, I think, on there. I got to meet Mark, who does the, uh, Mark Brown, who does the collectibles for the Bad Religion page. I wanted to give a special thanks to uh, Alexis, Alexis G, who uh, let me use footage from the show for the songs Faith Alone and What It Is and Murder. So thank you, Alexis. Uh, it was cool meeting both you and Mark in person. I mean, you know, I got to talk to you for a few minutes, but still really cool. You guys are awesome. Just like everybody else watching this, you're all fucking rad. I don't want to make this video too long. I know I'm kind of rambling, but the uh, overall, the show was fantastic. I was so thrilled to be able to go. I'd been looking forward to it since June when the tickets went on sale. Um, just all the bands were great. War on Women, fantastic. Alkaline Trio were really, really good. Uh, Bad Religion were the best, which I kind of expected. I love both bands. I, I love both bands equally. They're like, you know... Ask me which child I love more. Ask me which band I love more. They're both fan-fucking-tastic. The show is just perfect for me. So definitely I recommend go see these goddamn bands. Go buy a ticket. Like I said, my lady who was kind of on the fence, she could take them or leave them prior to the show. But she's now a Bad Religion fan. She even thought that they did better than Alkaline Trio, and she liked Trio more. So... Yeah, I'm gushing, blah, 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 blah. Epitaph should pay me, right? Go see these bands. You'll have a great time. Fucking support live music and punk rock. And hopefully support this channel. Uh, if you dig anything that you're seeing here, throw a like or a comment. Maybe even subscribe. So I'm going to be doing a little bit more of these. I got some fun stuff planned for the channel. I've got some interviews coming up. Hopefully they're planned. Before I mention any names, I want to solidify them. More reviews coming up like this. Hopefully you guys dig it. What else can I say? It was a great show. I dug it. Fucking go see this band. Go see these bands. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. 
I really appreciate everybody that watches and comments or interacts with the channel at all. It's something I do for fun. We're at 351, two subscribers, something like that. But whatever. Like I said, I do it for fun, and I do it for the 20 or so people that watch my shit. So thanks so much. We'll leave them by the door.